whatever reason, your club like didn't allow sparring, or it was very, uh, it was very um, delusional type of sparring. You know, like mm. they just go at it, but they don't really go at it. Like they're both people are um, ultra predictable in, in in what they're doing. You know, I, I'm kind of talking about like sticky hands and 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 you know those Wing Chun drills where they're going back and forth with your hands. They're like, yeah. Da, 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 da. like yeah, okay, well, whatever. Such That's the what. Operative drill. It would be like if if all you did in jujitsu was you know cooperative uh, sequences, right? Without ever um, you know, sparring or, or even, even just drilling at a higher level. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you would get really good at essentially doing contact, modern dance improvisation, as opposed to not even improvisation. You get really good at, at doing sequences and that's it. Right. Yeah. So then, here's the, what, here, here, like, if you really want to boil it down to the essence, like I'm thinking if you don't get, if you don't punch somebody in the face and get punched in the face, or get kicked or kick somebody in the head and you and, and you get kicked in the face then guess what that means that you can't fight it's as simple as that and for judo if you haven't thrown anybody or gotten thrown or gotten choked out or gotten arm barred or done it if you haven't had it done to you and you haven't done it to anybody else then you can't fight it's as simple as that but me in from coming from where for, uh, where I'm coming from like I'm I'm a brown belt currently, but I've been fighting all this time. I've been competing and I've been doing my randories like at the club and then going out and competing. So by the time I get to my black belt, like I have a really, uh, I got really strong fundamentals in fighting for my sport <clears throat> and like in technique. So that's why now I'm, I'm with the big boys. Now I'm like, okay, now the gloves come off. Now we could really play and, and evolve and focus and, and, and narrow down our techniques and specialize and do all kinds of, of, uh, of, of great things and keep on evolving. But for somebody who uh, practices any, in, any type of martial art, if you haven't, in my opinion, if, if you haven't punched people in the head and, you know, and vice versa, yeah, and, and if you haven't kicked anybody in the head and vice versa, you haven't thrown anybody or and vice versa or you haven't gotten choked out or joint locked and vice versa then essentially yeah you you don't know how to fight unfortunately yeah man exactly but how many martial arts are there out there and uh, you know, including including brazilian jiu-jitsu there's a bunch of hippy dippy nonsense in brazilian jiu-jitsu to be honest like yeah. all these upside down spinning whatever nonsense moves that look really cool if you're looking through an instagram feed and it's a hashtag jujitsu. Oh, look at that helicopter spinning de la worm, whatever it is, right? And it looks cool. But the question is, has anybody ever actually done that in a fight? And the answer is usually no. Or I knew a guy who could do it once. But yeah, if um but I hear this constantly from uh from you know, martial artists, because they're always giving me feedback, especially on my videos where they ask, is this effective? And if my answer is, in my experience, no, they get mad, of course, because uh, they, they, they want to believe that they'll tell me this is part of my system. My sensei taught me this move. And therefore, therefore, because I identify with it, because it's part of my tribe, I have to defend it to the death. Right. And then I'll ask them. Have you ever done this in a fight? Have you ever done this against a resisting opponent? Have you ever done this in a sparring session against somebody um, who wasn't cooperating? And the answer, the honest answer is almost always no. In that case, well, then it doesn't work. Not for you anyway. Maybe for that one guy who is uh, really strong and really big. And yeah, man. I mean, think about wrist locks, for example. Wrist locks are, I use wrist locks. I like wrist locks. I get caught in wrist locks from time to time when grappling. But I think a lot of people like to romanticize them. And we'll see this a lot with um, angry Aikido practitioners of the internet. I'm going to pick on them for a minute because specifically because they send me a lot of angry messages. I don't have anything against Aikido, to be honest. I think there are a lot of beautiful Aikido techniques that I actually use myself but um they, they get mad and they will tell me things like i totally use this technique 
look, here's a video. And then they'll show a video and they're like a 300 pound, just jacked bouncer type of guy picking on little skinny dudes <laughs> and risk talking essentially child sized people. I'm like, well, of course, one thing people don't understand about, understand about wrist locks is that to control somebody with a wrist lock, either one, you've got to pin them and gain superior position, which is how it's generally done in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, or two, you've got to have great physical strength to an imposing level. Uh, or three, you have to take somebody completely by surprise who has no, no idea what a wrist lock is. So that's, yeah. that's been, yeah, that has been my experience anyway. I know people hate my experience, but that's my experience. I, I mean, I, I've invested my life into training and martial arts and trying to find the most, the highest reward, lowest risk techniques. And not every te technique is at, a, at the same level. It's not. I mean, some techniques look cool. Everybody, I mean, everybody knows this, but not everybody wants to admit it. Some techniques look cool. Some techniques give you style points, if you will, or what that's worth in a fight, which is nothing. Um, but the high percentage stuff is always going to be the high percentage stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. And it's funny that you mentioned uh, where, that you talk about wrist locks. And I agree 100% with those three things that you said, which is either you're ultra strong relative to the other guy, you cut them off guard or you got a positional advantage and okay, now you can crack that lock. But I mean, for the most part, like it's, it's not a high percentage thing. Like how often are you going to be able to do that in an actual fight? And like, it depends on the context too. Like what, what exactly is going on? And so, yeah, so wrist locks to me, it's like, yeah, you could, like you said, like you get caught in it every once in a while, right? Because either, uh, you got caught, caught off guard and the guy just was strong enough to pull it off on you, you know, because you're not a small guy. You're six. Uh, how tall are you? Six, uh, one. six one. And six how much you weigh? About, uh, in pounds, about 205 pounds right now. OK, OK. Yeah. So you're not uh, you're, you're not you're not big. At, I mean, sorry, you're not I'm, small. I'm not at, tiny. I'm not tiny. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, for somebody to pull that, that, that crap on you, like they must have been either really strong, caught you off guard, or they were in a position where, uh, they had a dominant position on you and then they were able to pull it off. Right. And, and yeah, so, but I mean, for, for most people like getting like a lot of martial art nerds, first of all, you're not that strong. Most of these guys aren't that strong because these nerds yeah. usually don't even lift weights, unfortunately. Right. Uh, because, you know, they might have that belief that weights slow you down. So they don't lift weights. So they're not strong. 